I come from Poland. And in Poland, when I was growing up, it was the time of communism, great poverty. Every single week before Sunday and Saturday, we were getting ready for Mass on Sunday because we only had Mass on Sunday and we would take our weekly bath whether we needed it or not. And so I took my weekly bath. I'm so happy to be able to celebrate this Holy Eucharist, Holy Mass with all of you. Thank you for coming today. You know, I lived in Poland with my grandparents. My grandfather, who was a member of the Communist Party, never went to church. He was an enemy of the church. In fact, he threatened to kill our parish priest. He ridiculed my grandmother. They were married for 44 years. He made fun of her for praying her rosary every day. On Sunday, when we would get ready to go to church, he would proclaim, work is my prayer. And he would work seven days a week because in communism, which is godless, there is no God. Work is your God. But for us, our God is Jesus Christ. We know that we walk by faith and not by sight. And we know that when our earthly pilgrimage ends here, and it is just a pilgrimage, that there is a dwelling place that God has prepared for us. I don't know about all of you, but I want to go to heaven. You may want to go to purgatory, but I want to go to heaven. And my grandfather would go on ridiculing my grandmother, making fun of us for going to church, being an enemy of faith and religion. And then everything changed in his life in one week when he was diagnosed with colon cancer, which eventually killed him eight months after his diagnosis. And he used to never cry. He was such a tough guy, always, as he was saying, trying to make me a man. Man, don't cry, he would say, having me fight a rooster, do all sorts of things. He never showed his emotions. He was such a tough guy. And he had a colonostomy bag, which is where his feces would come out from his side. And my grandmother would have to clean him because he was so weak from the colon cancer.
the feces would go all over him. The bag wouldn't stick to his side because he was just skin and bones. And one time I walk into the room where he was lying in bed and my grandmother was cleaning him. And I see, and the stench, the smell was so repulsive. And I see every, the mess all over him. And I want to leave the room. And she looks right at me and she says, don't you dare get in here. And she didn't just have me help her clean him up, but she had me do it. Because as she declared, loving has us many times clean up messes. Loving is messy. It's messy business. And he began to cry as I was cleaning him from his feces. I cried. My grandmother cried. Fighting a rooster did not make me a man. Cleaning his feces turned me into the human being that I am today. He used to do things like he was an alcoholic. He beat my grandmother. He was very violent. I had to watch all of this growing up. He used to take my skin and poke it with needles and I couldn't cry. He killed my dog. Everybody has a story in their family. I hate this term, dysfunctional families, because it makes you feel like there are actually functional families. There are no functional families. There's no Brady Bunch out there. And yours is no different than mine. But the toughness, the hardness, did not change me. Cleaning him up did. Because loving is messy. As my grandmother declared in that room. The vulnerability opening up. Our faith centers around a baby, doesn't it? Who's stronger in a room? A baby? Or Arnold Schwarzenegger? Or Hercules? Or a muscle builder? Or a bodybuilder? Who's stronger? A baby. A baby melts hearts. The hardest of hearts are melted when a baby is in a room. It's the vulnerability, the openness. Why did God come among us as a baby? Because nobody is afraid of babies.
Unless you become like a little child, Jesus says, you will not have the kingdom of heaven within you. You have to humble yourself. Jesus, though he was in the form of God, that's the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians that I am quoting. Not like in one of my previous parishes, somebody was doing the reading from St. Paul to the Philippians and gets up here and says, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Filipinos. No, it's to the Philippians. Today we had the reading to the Hebrews. Do you know Moses? You all know who Moses was? Do you know how Moses made his coffee? He brews. <laughs> I have more jokes, but you have to come back at three o'clock. I can only give you a little synopsis here, a taste. During Mass, I can't go on for a long time. I'm very capable of that, you know. In fact, people are always worried when I start talking because they think I'm going to talk for a long time. So one time I, I was trying to put people at ease, you know. And I said, you know, I, I said, don't worry. I said, don't worry, because people were all worried. I said, don't worry. Let me tell you the same thing that Elizabeth Taylor told each and every one of her eight husbands. I said, don't worry. Do not be afraid. I won't keep you long. <laughs> one time I was going to give a talk at a at a dinner and you know you never uh, at dinner people are eating and about dessert time is when they introduce you to give your talk and so the master of ceremonies comes up and says father you know um should we introduce you now or should we let the people enjoy themselves a little while longer <laughs> <clears throat> But my grandfather is a perfect story. It's his life that I believe instilled in me the vocation to the priesthood, to be a priest. When he was diagnosed with colon cancer, after 44 years of marriage, my grandmother prayed for him every single day. She didn't do like many of you do with your family members. She didn't go yapping at him, you know. Oh, you got to pray, you got to do this, you got to go to church. Many people do that to their kids to their spouses. You should pray like my grandmother did. Pray more about your children to God and talk less to them about God. Talk to God more about your children and less to your children about God. Or do you think you're so powerful? If God can melt hearts and move mountains. Don't you think he can move a little human heart that your spouse has? He did that with my grandfather. My grandma prayed for him every day. She prays the rosary to this day. She prays the rosary. Quietly. All the other family members don't join in. She doesn't talk. She's like Mary, you know, she keeps it all in her heart. Joseph, whose year we celebrate today and this year, how many words does he say in the Bible? Zero. We're very good at moving our lips, aren't we? My grandmother prayed for my grandfather for 44 years. In the last eight months of his life, 
He's diagnosed on a Tuesday with colon cancer and the following Sunday, stage four colon cancer. And the following Sunday, I walk into a room and he's sitting there and he's all dressed up. And I look at him and I said, and why are you all dressed up? And he says, I'm going to church with you today. And at that, I was going to say something, but my grandmother enters the room and she says, shh, let's just go along with it. <laughs> because what no communist manifesto could give him, Jesus Christ gave him, which is what? Hope. Which is what we all need. Don't we? We need hope. And my grandfather died in peace. He made a confession, went to confession to the same priest that he threatened to kill. She prayed for him for 44 years. How long have you been praying and hoping? God answers each and every one of our prayers in God's time, not in our time. For one day are like a million years come and gone, and a million years are like one day in the sight of God. God hears you and God will answer you. Don't you pray the 23rd Psalm in your life? Y'all read the Bible? Do you even have a Bible? The 23rd Psalm says, even though I walk in the midst of the valley of the shadow of death. That means I'm walking, I'm not stuck. Hmm? Are we walking or are we stuck? You're stuck when you limit yourself with your mind. We are walking. Everything is going to be okay because God is with us. And if God is with us, nobody can be against us. For what can separate me from the love of Christ, which I have gotten to know through Christ Jesus? Can trial or tribulation or a pandemic or a virus or this suffering or that problem? No, nothing can separate me from the love of God, not even death itself, which is what I believe. And that fills me with great peace today that my grandfather is in heaven. He didn't die. He just changed places. He went from an earthly existence to an eternal existence. I did not say, goodbye to my grandfather. You know what I said to him? Because I'm a Christian. I said, see you later. Because I'm going to see him again. When the love of God, which destroys all that is bad, including death itself, shall wipe away every tear from our eyes. And we shall behold God as he is. The love of God, wiping away every tear from our eyes. You know, my grandfather, he was fascinated by the one cent coin, the penny. And there is not a day that goes by that I do not find a penny somewhere. Walking here today, this morning, I found a penny. And I know what some of you cynics will say. Oh, it's just a coincidence. There's pennies everywhere. For you, it may be a penny. But for me, it's a sign because I have faith. And I walk by faith.
and not by sight. And my faith tells me that my grandfather is okay. That he's having the time of his life. That he can have all the shots of vodka he wants. He liked it. In fact, he, he, he made his own. We had a bootlegging business. and <laughs> There's a story about that one too. My grandmother ended up in jail. <laughs> I don't think I ever told this one. Don't tell her. <laughs> but that penny is a sign that my grandfather is okay. Don't we all need that? Unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. We have to, in order to find ourselves, we have to die to ourselves, die to our fears, hmm? die to our worries, die to this life, to live the eternal life, the heaven that God has come to bring us. You know, Jesus Christ did not come to bring us to heaven. He came to bring heaven to us. Did you know that? He wants you to have heaven. What's the definition of heaven? The presence of God. What's the definition of hell? The absence of God. A lot of people in hell right now, aren't they? Loneliness, depression. Like we've never seen before, suicides. The most prescribed drugs are for depression and anxiety. We have it all in terms of stuff. And yet we are so unhappy because we haven't heard what Jesus said. Man does not live on bread alone. My grandfather had to find that out in the last eight months of his life. When will you find it out? I want you to find it out right now. To come to yourself. That's why you're all going to come back at 3 o'clock today.